Yo, yo, yo. I know, I know, it's been two months. Sometimes I become a big procrastinator. Including this one, there are going to be three videos in total before summer. The next video is going to be my best one yet. And I'm gonna talk about a really big football topic. It will be released in two, three weeks from now. But now, we have another topic to discuss. But before that, I wanna thank a friend of mine on Twitter, Furious Rands, for helping me with this video. And maybe go follow him on Twitter. Why not? Well, I believe like so many others that Hazard, or should I say Azar, is currently the best player in the EPL. I will back my statements with facts and stats. Well first, let's establish Azar. What are the traits and qualities that make him so good? Right out of the bat, when you watch Azar play, you notice his immense ability at dribbling. In the past 5 years in the EPL alone, he had 700 successful dribbles, the most in England. His feints, quick switches of pace, change of direction and ball retention are all key to him being a monster at dribbling. Be it in tight spaces or wide areas, he'll usually find a way to advance with the ball. Goals. Well, I gotta say, Azar is not an elite goal scorer. But for a player of his type, a playmaker scoring 20-ish goals a season is quite superb. He's one of the best penalty takers in the world. I like his technique. He gives false information to the goalkeeper with his eyes or feet, leading the goalkeeper to go to the wrong side. He basically plays with fire, which makes it more interesting. Of course, when you are a great dribbler, you're going to exploit that asset for scoring goals. When going against multiple defenders, either outside or inside the penalty box, he uses trickery to defeat opponents. Be it quick body feints or crochets, he leaves defenders to dust, which opens enough space for him to sling the ball in either the top or low corner of the net. When I rewatched his goals, I noticed that he either scores penalties or world-class goals. Like, really good goals. Seriously, go watch this video. It's freaking amazing how he rarely scores cheap goals like tap-ins or deflected goals. And this shows that even though his numbers aren't as big as some other players, his goals and assists have more quality to them compared with the other attackers. He doesn't really need to score a lot of goals. Just by having him in your team is an advantage. His contribution for his team is mostly positive. And for this, I want to take a moment to say that scoring a lot of goals does not equal being a great player. Well, a great goal scorer, of course. And this is a really good opportunity to talk about this subject. Because Azar, like so many other playmakers, suffer a bit from this. The media is the one to blame. They push the narrative of scoring goals makes you a great player. Which is very wrong. To make it clear, let's take Johan Cruyff or Diego Maradona. Both of them do not figure in the top 30 best goal scorers in history. Probably not in the top 50. But they still rank among the greatest footballers in history. La crème de la crème. Everyone puts them in their top 10 or top 5. But goal scorers like Müller, Romario, Bacon and Friedenreich are not seen among the top 10 greatest players. What I want to say is Azar does not need to be a top goal scorer to be acknowledged as one of the best players in the 21st century. And maybe ever. Azar is also a playmaker. Since 2012, when he began playing for Chelsea, he has assisted 70 goals in all comps. Of course, him being a great dribbler, he uses it to his advantage. To open up spaces for his teammates before passing a through ball. He has a huge repertoire of passes. Short, long, through balls, crosses, dummies, and of course, the back heel. Back heels are so important in his game, and I can see why. They grant him another dimension. Basically, most players rarely use this option. They see their game as if it is in two dimensions, 180 degrees, left and right. But Azar sees it in 360 degrees. Being able to use back heels so effortlessly give him more options, which makes his actions less predictable for his opponents. And when you aren't predictable, you have more chances to succeed. He's also pretty aware when it comes to the position of his comrades. I believe that he is the best in the world when it comes to back heels. Well now, to back this up, let's talk about stats and accolades. Even though winning trophies require having a good team, I'm gonna still mention them. But remember, they are not a measurement for rating how good or bad a player is. Two Premier League trophies, one Europa League in 2013, the FA Cup in 2018 and the Capital One in 2015 
these are all with Chelsea. He also won the League One and the French Cup during his time with Lille. In addition to that, he earned multiple individual accolades with Chelsea, Lille and Belgium. The PFA and the FWA in 2015, he was included in the top 25 Ballon d'Or shortlist in 5 consecutive years, the Silver Bowl in the 2018 World Cup and he obtained other significant awards during his still running club and national career. Well, these are still superficial facts for our argument on Azar being the best in England and for that, we should look at some statistics. When it comes to the overall best offensive players, you'd think Messi, Ronaldo, Suarez, Mbappe, Salah are the ones who take the top spot. Unsurprisingly, some of them are not there. Dominic, who's a friend of mine, dug deeper into this and found out that Azar is the second most complete attacking player based on goals, assists, key passing and dribbling, in the top 5 European leagues of course. And Azar takes up the second place just behind Messi and he's also one of the three best in direct goal contributions in the top 5 European leagues and best in the Premier League. Well now to some comparisons. I'm not just going to praise Azar and say he's the best in England without comparing him with the other EPL footballers. And for that I will be using whoscored.com, a pretty reliable website. Well the most reliable about everything related to football statistics. Goals. He takes up the 8th position with 16 goals only 6 goals away from Aubameyang, Mane and Salah. Assists, he's on top with 15, Salah is not there, Sterling has 10. Key passes, Azar is 2nd with 98, Madison is 1st with 100. And we all know that Azar is the best dribbler in England, there's no need to show how much he has made. You see Azar tops 2 of these categories, and he's the only one you always find ranked somewhere in the top 10. When it comes to the overall season, whoscored.com has Azar ranked first with 7.81, Sterling second with 7.61, Salah third with 7.57. These are all in 2019 in the EPL alone. To solidify his status as the best in England, let's look at another stat by who scored the man of the match. Man of the match is a title given to someone who performs the best in a single football match. Guess who has the most? Yep, Azar again with 14. Second place goes for Sterling and Salah with each one of them having 8. Those are only the league numbers because when it comes to the whole season, Azar has 18. To put that in perspective and just for comparison, the only player that has more in Europe is Messi with 22. Let that sink in. Azar is not just a one season wonder. During the 7 seasons he spent in the Prem, he was 3 times the best rated once fourth and once fifth. If it wasn't for injuries and the team having problems in 2016, he could have been in the top 10 players ranking for six consecutive seasons. Azar has been the best player in England for the past five years, and I can't see anyone who's more enjoyable to watch in the Prem. I believe that right now, in 2019, that Azar is one of the three best players in the world, alongside Neymar, and Messi. Chelsea, he sits Foster down and puts Chelsea into the lead. Thank you for watching. Stay in touch because I have a very important video coming soon this month. It's going to be about Messi. Probably the most in-depth analysis you'll ever watch about him. It's going to be a surprise. So stay in touch because I'll be giving some hints on social media. Follow me on Twitter, subscribe and see you later. You should also watch one of my other videos.